Hi, my name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable three-year-old little boy. On our channel, you'll find simple and tasty recipes using everyday ingredients. So we are out for dinner at one of our favorite Asian restaurants and Howard, as usual, ordered his favorite soup dumplings. And then I got an order of egg rolls and the soup dumplings came with dipping sauce. So we both got a dipping sauce and I'll be back once our entrees come. So Howard ordered the braised pork belly fried rice, and here it is. And I ordered Mongolian shrimp. I normally order Mongolian beef, but trying to eat less red beef, and doesn't this look good? So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, we are having short ribs. And if you've been with our channel for a while, you know I typically buy these when they're on sale. I clean them, put them in a freezer bag and throw some marinade in them so we can have them whenever we want. Um, I marinated these with my favorite Korean barbecue sauce, hot and spicy. They used to sell this at Tom Thumb. Um, they don't sell it at Tom Thumb anymore. I usually find the hot and spicy version at Asian grocery stores, but I've seen the original version. I think I've seen it at Walmart and maybe a couple of other grocery stores, but this is easier to find. Serving it with some um, broccoli blend for stir fry. I had this in my freezer. It has broccoli, carrots, onions, um, water chestnuts. Here it is on the plate and then serving it with some garlic and ghee rice. This is a 90 second rice, <clears throat> excuse me. Ghee is just clarified butter, so it is pretty buttery and it has a mild garlic flavor. Normally I would make, you know, like fried rice or something, but I'm trying to use stuff that I already have in my pantry. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, we are having taco salads and I am trying something new with my meat tonight. So I really like the texture of Taco Bell meat, how it's really kind of fine. I am going to make this the same way that I make my chili for my hot dog. So just kind of experimenting with this. So I have almost two pounds of 80-20 ground beef in this skillet and I have two cups of water in here. So I'm gonna turn it on and let it come to a boil, reduce the heat, cover it and simmer it for about, I don't know, maybe about an hour or so until the meat is cooked and it looks really fine. Then I'll bring you back and show you what I do next. Okay, so it's been about an hour and 15 minutes and this is all of the liquid that is left in the pot. So it didn't get really soft and crumbly like I thought that it would, but I am not gonna give up. I'm going to add in these two packages of taco seasoning. This is what I had in my cabinet, one mild, one hot. And then I'm gonna add one cup of water and continue to let it simmer. Hopefully that meat will break down um, just a little bit more. Okay, so here is the taco meat. I ended up letting this simmer for another half an hour and it is pretty fine and it's very, very tender. I did end up using my um, handy dandy meat chopper to get it even smaller, but it was, it was worth it. I think it was worth it. I'll definitely do this again if I make uh, taco meat. I will say I don't think I'm that crazy about the McCormick taco seasoning though. Um, to me, it's kind of heavy on the chili powder. Um, but anyway, let me get our plates all fixed up and I'll show you what they look like. Okay, so here is our taco salads. Uh, so this is Howard's. So underneath the lettuce, he has refried beans and the taco meat, of course. He's got some lettuce on top, cheese, sour cream, avocado, and salsa. And then this is mine. I am always plain Jane. I just like meat, cheese, and salsa on mine. 
And then these are the taco salad shells that um, I love. And if you've been with our channel for a while, you know that I love these things and I have literally been eating them since childhood. Well, recently I've had a hard time finding them and I actually reached out to the company and they said they lost Walmart as one of their major vendors. And I don't think this company is going to be around for long. Um, the woman told me to reach out to Walmart if you like these things too and uh, request that they add them back into their stores. Otherwise, I don't think they're gonna be around um, much longer. So I did find them around here at a local grocery store called Brookshire's and I bought uh, several boxes and put them in my fridge. So um, just an FYI, if you happen to have them in their air your area and you like them, reach out to local stores to ask them to carry them. Um, otherwise, stock up because honestly, um, I'm not sure if this company is going to be around much longer. But anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, we are having little mini pizzas. So in my freezer, I had this four pack of Stone Fire um, Thin Crust Pizzas. So um, this is Howard's Pizza. And he likes a lot of sauce on his pizza. So he has a lot of sauce on there, um, mozzarella, red onions, and then he's got some pepperoni that I picked up from Kroger. This is a deli slice, so they're really big slices of pepperoni. And then also in addition to the mozzarella, he sliced up some of this double smoked cheddar cheese and put it on there as well. He seasoned his pizza with garlic powder, onion powder, and red pepper flakes. And then, oh, this is, we didn't have pizza sauce, so we just used some marinara. And then this is my pizza. I've just got some, the marinara, onions, the uh, pepperoni, and the cheese, of course, just the mozzarella cheese. And then on top, I have sprinkled this Neapolitan pizza seasoning that I picked up from Ollie's, which is kind of like Big Lots was back, you know, many, many years ago. So got it from there, $1.29. Now, last time we made pizzas, I told you all about this tomato basil seasoning that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, and it is very good too. So I wanted to do a side-by-side -side to show you what they look like. The biggest difference to me is that the Dollar Tree seasoning, I think salt may be like the, it's the first ingredient, whereas the McCormick, the salt is the, where is it? It's the last, hold on a minute guys, sorry. Here it is. Salt is the very last ingredient, but um, very similar looking. So anyway, we are going to pop these into the oven and then I'll bring you back of course and show you how they turned out. Okay, so this is Howard's right out of the oven. He baked his on a cookie sheet because he prefers a softer crust. I like mine crispier, so I am going to bake mine directly on the oven rack. And here is mine, and I think I said I cooked mine directly on the rack. I like my pizza a little bit more brown. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, for dinner tonight, we are using a packet that I have had in my pantry. This McCormick garlic butter shrimp scampi, really easy to prepare. All you have to do is of course add your shrimp, olive oil, butter, and then eight ounces of linguine. Now, where I messed up is I used the fresh deli linguine. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is nine ounces, but like I said, it's only an ounce more than the recipe calls for. But I think what happened is I feel like that fresh linguine kind of soaked up all that garlic butter sauce, so it's kind of dry. I wish I'd used just regular old dried pasta. It does have a good flavor, but I do wish there had been a little bit more sauce left over. And then we are having a side of broccoli, which Howard made. It was fresh broccoli. He added in a bunch of different seasonings, including a lot of garlic, and it smells really good. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time.